today we're going to be checking out the iGo 600 portable power station from Foxion and their 200 watt solar panel and we're going to be performing a handful of tests to see how well they perform and discussing whether or not these are actually something you should buy. But before we dive in be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. The Foxion iGo 600 is their smallest power station as far as I know but they also make a larger 1200 watt and a 3600 watt model as well. There's a small handle on top which does make it a little bit more convenient to carry and the unit's weight is about 10 pounds 9.6 ounces. The LCD display is a nice bright green color and it's very easy to see and it's going to give you the remaining battery life as a percentage and estimation of the remaining runtime at the current output and the current input and output in watts as well as an indication of whether the AC or the DC is active. There's two AC outputs, a car charger style port, two USB A's, one of which is a quick charge 3.0 port and two USB-C ports, one of which is a PD port, which can be used to charge devices, and it can also be used as an input to charge the power station. In order to see whether or not we can continuously run at the 600 watt max output Foxion claims, we're going to plug in a ton of different devices to try to push this little power station to its limits. Right now I'm plugging in a variety of different box fans, a blower fan, a laptop, some lights, some air filters, and even a mini fridge, and this power station was able to handle it all and then some. And what I discovered is that we're actually able to comfortably run this power station at about 740 watts which is 140 watts higher than stated. It did shut off when it crossed into the 750 watt range, so this would definitely be the max that you can continually run it at. Next, we're gonna test out the true watt hour capacity of the iGo 600 and see how close it comes to the 518 watt hour stated. In order to test this, we're gonna run it at about half the continuous output level at about 290 watts, which will cause the internal fan to come on. So it'll be a good test of how efficient this device really is. And we've got this blower fan and a small LED light plug in and we've got this power meter plugged in and it's going to give us a measurement of the total watt hours at the end and now that we've reached zero percent battery life we can check the meter and we see that it reached 486 watt hours which is just shy of 94 percent of the 518 watt hours that it claimed which is quite good and based on the expected price of 440 dollars this brings the cost per watt hour to about one dollar and ten cents now that the battery is drained, we're going to charge it back up and see how long it takes. With just the wall charger, we're clocking in at about 90 watts max, but if we also plug in the USB-C simultaneously, we can reach as high as about 103 watts, which should boost up the charging speeds a little bit, and the display is telling us that it will take about 6 hours to charge, so we'll see how close this estimate actually is, and we're going to let it run until it charges up. And the total time to go from 0% battery to fully charged was about 6 hours and 2 minutes, which was again very close to what was expected. So it seems like the onboard computer does a reasonably good job of anticipating the charge time. The next test we're going to do is to see if this device has passed through charging and whether or not it can be used as a backup battery. At the moment the iGo 600 is plugged into the wall outlet and we've got a laptop here that we've taken the battery out and we're able to plug it in and it turns on just fine. Now that it's plugged in we're going to unplug the charger that's connected to the wall outlet and when we do this we'll see if the computer dies or not and as you can see the laptop did remain on so this device would work reasonably well as a backup battery. In addition to the power station, Foxion sent me over this whopping 200 watt solar panel to test out and this is the largest solar panel that I've ever tested on the channel so I'm excited to see how well it performs. This briefcase style panel is quite large weighing in at approximately 19 pounds 6.4 ounces and it unfolds into four different panels. The panels themselves are very high quality and have ETFE lamination which is way more durable compared to PET lamination and it has MC4 connectors which should adapt well to many other power stations from other other brands. The only thing I found a bit strange about this design is that there's a cord that comes out of the back of the panel which redirects into the zippered cable storage compartment which isn't the greatest and they should have figured out some way to feed this directly into the compartment without going through the zipper but overall it's not a deal breaker by any means. There's a pretty unique kickstand setup on the back which uses button style clasps to help you angle the panel and you can adjust the angle of the panel between 35 degrees to 55 degrees fairly easily. Now we're going to do a charging test and the one thing to keep in mind here is that this is a 200 watt panel and it's slightly overpowered for this unit which has a max charging speed of 120 watts and it was designed to be used with their larger iGo 1200 and iGo 3600 models so in order to get a better understanding of what the panel is truly capable of we've got a splitter attached so that it can charge two different power stations simultaneously so in addition to the Foxion iGo 600 I've got the OOP 600 watt power station plugged in as well it's a little after 1 p.m. and I performed this test right after I finished up testing out all those mini portable 
solar panels from a few weeks ago, and I was able to record a max charging speed of about 182 watts split between the two devices, which is really impressive. And it came in quite close to the 200 watts advertised, which is 91% of what it claimed. And in my experience, it's not uncommon for panels to fall much shorter than this. So overall, I'm quite pleased with these results. Foxion really did a great job of fairly representing their product and not dramatically overstating their specs. And they performed very close in my testing to what was advertised. And in some cases, they actually perform better, which is always nice to see. It would be great to hear your thoughts on the Foxion iGo 600 and their 200 watt solar panel down in the comments below. And if you want to pick up one of these and help support the channel, you can find links in the description, along with a link to a database comparing my testing results to a bunch of different portable solar power stations down below.